This is the Škoda Octavia. If you've ever been to the Czech Republic, you're surely familiar with it, because they are absolutely everywhere. In fact, the Škoda Octavia tops the best-selling cars list almost every year in this country. In this video, we'll explore the history and future of this storied car model, how it came to be, and why it is so popular. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. The car manufacturer known as Škoda today began in the late 19th century when two men, Václav Laurin and Václav Klement, started a bicycle manufacturing business. The story behind why they started the business is quite funny, in my opinion. In 1894, Václav Klement bought this bicycle from the German manufacturer Seidl und Naumann, called Germania. He was happily riding around the city of Mladá Boleslav until it broke. Frustrated with the subpar built quality, Clement wrote a letter in his native language, Czech, to the offices of the manufacturer, requesting a repair. Because Seidel und Naumann was a German company, operating in German-speaking Austria-Hungary, they wrote back, saying that if Clement wants something, he should write in a quote, intelligible language, unquote. This pushed them over the edge, and in 1995, he started his own bicycle manufacturing and repair company with his business partner, Václav Lauren. Their first bicycle model, called Slavia, was a success, and soon the company began growing and expanding their production. In 1899, the company started manufacturing the Laurin Aclement Type 1, the first motorcycle to be made in Austria-Hungary. Looking at the motorcycle, it's clear that compared to modern motorcycles, it's basically a bicycle with an engine. In 1905, their first automobile was introduced, called the Laurin Aclement A. The car's engine was capable of putting out 7 horsepower, and the top speed was 40 to 45 kilometers, or 25 to 28 miles per hour. If he wanted to get this bad boy in 1905, you'd have to shell out 3,600 Austro-Hungarian crowns, which is about $71,400 today. Laurin Clement's cars continued to improve, and the company became one of the largest automakers in Austria-Hungary. After Gavrila Princip pranked Franz Ferdinand in Bosnia and caused World War I, production shifted to military vehicles and aircraft engines. After Czechoslovakia noped out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in 1918, Laurin Aklement restarted production of civilian cars. However, things weren't all sunshine and Pilsner beer. In 1924, a large part of the Laurin Aklement factory in the city of Mladá Boleslav burned to the ground. The company managed to recover, but due to the changing market environment, Laurin Aklement sought out a buyer. Eventually, in 1925, the company was bought by the industrial conglomerate Škoda, and that's what the car brand is known as today. However, the Laurin Aklement name still lives on. If you try to configure a Škoda car with the most luxurious features, you can see that the package bears the name of the two late founders. The company continued to grow through the Roaring Twenties, until the American stock market had a bit of a moment in 1929. Škoda was hit hard, but eventually recovered by making smaller, cheaper, more accessible vehicles. The factories were taken over by Germany in 1939, and they were incorporated into the Reichswerke Hermann Göring industrial conglomerate. After the war, Škoda was re-established and started producing smaller, economical cars. In February 1948, the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia seized power in a coup d'état, which started off the 41-year-long era of communism in this country. One of the core tenets of communism was to make stuff for the common worker, which included cars. One of the cars introduced during this time was the Škoda 440, known as the Spartak. The Spartak was supposed to be a mass-market vehicle for the average worker, or at least, that was the original idea. Everyone who has lived in pre-1989 Czechoslovakia knows this, the banana line. Long lines were standard for things like bananas, electronics, and yes, even cars. The situation with lines was even worse during the 50s. If you wanted to buy a brand new Spartak in 1955, you had to fork out 27,450 Czechoslovak crowns, at a time when the average monthly salary was 1192 crowns. It took roughly 23 average monthly salaries to save up enough money for a brand new car. 
In comparison, buying a base model Škoda Octavia today costs 619,900 Czech crowns, with an average monthly salary of 40,353 crowns, or about 15 monthly salaries. Even if you had the money, you had to get on a wait list, which was far from easy. In the late 50s, Škoda built upon the Škoda 440 and introduced the Škoda Octavia. At first, the Octavia was only produced as a sedan, but in 1960, the, in my opinion, most iconic Octavia model was introduced, the Octavia Station Wagon. This model became the quintessential family vehicle of its time in Czechoslovakia. Its trunk featured enough space for every use case, even for car trips to Bulgaria or Yugoslavia. The Octavia was also a racing beast. In the 60s, it won its category in the Monte Carlo Rally three times, under the command of crews from several countries. The original Octavia became a classic in Czechoslovakia, selling over 280,000 units during its 12-year production run. In the mid-60s, the Octavia was succeeded by the Škoda 1000 MB sedan, and in the late 60s, by the iconic Škoda 100. The Škoda 100 is probably the most important car in the mass motorization of Czechoslovakia, with over 1 million units being produced. The Škoda 100 became a part of pop culture, with mentions in various songs and other forms of media, like the song Jožin z Bažin by Ivan Mládek. In 1971, after the release of the 1000 MB and the 100, production of the Octavia ended. After the Velvet Revolution in 1989, Škoda found itself in trouble. The communist-era carmaker couldn't compete with Western and Japanese imports, and so, it was decided that the legendary carmaker was going to be privatized. Two companies were competing for Škoda, the French Renault and the German Volkswagen. In the end, in 1991, the German car giant Volkswagen started to take over Škoda. In return for tax breaks by the government, Volkswagen promised to invest hundreds of millions of euros in the country. Development of a new car model started just a year later, in 1992. The design process was spearheaded by industry heavyweights like Luke Donkerwalke, who designed Audi and Lamborghini vehicles. In 1996, the Škoda Octavia brand was revived, 25 years after the original model's production run ended. Two years later, the station wagon was brought back as well. Compared to the 1959 Škoda Octavia, the new model features a more aerodynamic shape, doesn't come with a three-door configuration, and comes with a diesel as well as a gasoline engine option. Adjusted for inflation, the base model first-generation Octavia cost 757,000 Czech crowns, or roughly 32,000 US dollars. Customers fell in love with the revived Octavia, and the first-generation model sold 1.44 million units over its production run. In 2004, the modernized second-generation Octavia started rolling off the production lines. This model was jam-packed with new features, like air conditioning, parking sensors, and ABS brakes. Adjusted for inflation, the base model second-generation Octavia cost 519,000 Czech crowns, or roughly 22,000 US dollars. The second-generation Octavia was a massive commercial success, with 2.5 million units being sold over its production run. Even in 2024, you can see second-generation Octavia somewhat frequently on the roads here in the Czech Republic. In 2012, the third-generation Škoda Octavia was introduced. This model wasn't particularly notable. It featured better, more efficient engines and better, more advanced technology, like cruise control. The third-generation Octavia received a facelift in 2017, which improved the front headlights and added pedestrian safety systems. Adjusted for inflation, the base model third-generation Škoda Octavia cost 498,000 Czech crowns, or roughly 21,000 US dollars. Overall, the third-generation Octavia was a huge commercial success as well, selling 2.6 million units over its production run. In 2019, the current fourth-generation Škoda Octavia model was introduced. This iteration of the iconic car brought several changes. For example, a heads-up display and plug-in hybrid and natural gas engine versions were added. As of February 2024, the base model 4th generation Škoda Octavia costs 619,900 Czech crowns, or roughly 26,000 US dollars. In conclusion, 
The Škoda Octavia is an iconic part of Škoda's lineup, which has sold over 7 million units over its history. It tops the best-selling cars list in the Czech Republic year after year, and even sells well abroad. I think the Octavia will continue to sell extremely well into the future. Thank you so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time. Bye! Frustrated with the sub- <laughs> This pushed him over the edge, and in 1895, he started his own bicycle manufacturing and er <laughs> Looking at the motorcycle, it's clear that it- <laughs> After Czechoslovakia noped out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in 1918, Laurin Aklemel star- <laughs> This model wasn't particularly notable. It featured ba- <laughs>